everybody! Welcome to, well, I guess this is uh, technically the, uh, I guess this is the first ever time we're ever doing like a uh, review slash discussion of a movie or something. I know we've done riffs in the past, but never have we done this before. So yes, welcome fellow viewers, Sonic fans, gamers, movie goers alike. This is the Spiffy Needle Geek's first ever movie review slash discussion, and we're talking about the official Sonic the Hedgehog movie. I'm Ryan, Super Sonic 407, along with uh, Danny, Rashushi Rises, our always returning guest, Brian, Rob Wars II, and new guest sh joining us for this one, Loudon, also known as Loudon Styles. Hey, Thank everybody! Yes. <laughs> Gotta go fast! Ah, uh, yeah, ah, uh, yeah, so... Gotta go fast! <laughs> Gotta go fast. The, the, the one, the, the one line that was more or less, um, kind of altered from the, uh, first, uh, movie trailer that we got of the Son of the Hedgehog movie. Oh, God. Can I just say, like, that initial trailer did not do this movie justice. Like, oh, horrible, hands down, horrible, it did not. Horrible, horrible model aside. Because I remembered when that trailer came out, that initial trailer came out, awful horrible model aside, it just looked so bland and generic. I initially wanted nothing. I was just going to be like, I'll wait till this thing pops up on Netflix or something. There's no way I'm spending the money to go to a movie and, you know, go see this thing. So, yeah, that initial trailer did not do this movie justice. It wasn't yeah. until... It wasn't until they up the mo they updated the model and started showing more of the trailers that that was when I was like, okay, you know what? I think I will check this out. Oh yeah, no, you are absolutely right. You know, now that you bring up like the bad model, I, yeah, I just want to briefly say like I'm kind of appalled by the fact that it's like here we have like um okay we see this first Sonic movie trailer right. Everyone, well, not everyone, but mostly everyone is flipping their shit because of how god awful the model was. Then, once they got the criticism, they and they got the point across, being like, "Okay, well, obviously, we need to um re uh, redo. We had to redo the model from scratch and reanimate everything from scratch just to appease to the fans. You know, to give this character the justice it deserves. Once that happens, and they show it off in the second movie trailer, then pretty much like half the people." that more or less probably hated the design, they do a complete 180 and they're just like, all right, come on. You guys should have just kept the original model. I mean, putting aside the fact it's god-awful, it's like, come on. We wanted to see this movie turn to a train wreck. You know, obviously, they those people, they are just in it for the memes, and it's stupid. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> uh, but, but yes. All right, so going on to the movie itself... I think the best way to approach this is try to um cover like the uh like the um parts that stand out the most like um as we're going to like a, a more brief synopsis of this movie and talk about how we feel about certain parts of this movie as we go along and if there's anything in between that someone wants to bring up and we can geek out about that we can go ahead and do that as well. Okay. Well, that being said, spoiler warning, just in case. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's like, I, I yeah, with, with this video, I'm going to be put, I, I'm already a put up like um, a spoiler warning, like in the title of this video, I put up like a warning, like before this, this discussion even <laughs> started. But yeah, just for a, uh, yeah, but yeah, just to be on the safe side. Yes. Th yeah. This one is like spoilers all around. So if you have not seen the movie already and you want to see it for yourself, go see this movie, support the movie, like, while it's in theaters right now as of this recording, or if you're watching this in the future and you still have yet to see the movie, at least buy the Blu-ray or DVD. Yeah. It's... I, or the special editions that they that they decide they want to do with it. It just depends. Literally support the absolute hell out of this because um, an FX company did not lose their jobs on Christmas just for this movie to bomb. I'm just saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're like, absolutely you, you know what? You're absolutely right. It's like a lot of yeah, cuz I cuz yeah, I noticed that too. Like a lot of articles they were throwing information out there or in this case misinformation saying, "All right, well the 
VFX studio that um, helped uh, reanimate Sonic, they lost their jobs because of this movie. No, Clouded is absolutely right. The Sonic movie had nothing to do with the studio being closed down. It was for, because no. of other financial issues that were going on behind the scenes with the studio itself. It had no affiliation with the Sonic movie. Yeah, like, but then again, here's the thing, and here's some people need to realize. Special effects companies, animators, are treated on the lower end of the totem pole in Hollywood. They get the yeah, worst yeah. end of it, no matter what. So, like, right when they were in post, the, the company that made the special effects and everything um shut down they every like it closed its doors everybody pretty much lost their jobs around christmas oh yeah which is just god awful i yeah it's like at this point i actually really do hope and pray that even with all that has happened they they will easily be able to find jo jobs like elsewhere in the field because it's like Really, I mean, it's like obviously we're gonna be obviously we're gonna be talking about this one particular topic a lot, more or less throughout the in, this entire dis review slash discussion or whatever. But I mean, it's like yeah, kind of like what Danny was bringing up earlier. It's like unlike the first trailer where you know it gave Sonic like no justice whatsoever. It's like the the VFX studio. It's like they gave Sonic the justice it deserves from from a visual standpoint and from just. Just overall, just honoring like the character itself. Well, that, and yet this happens. Yeah, I mean they well, took Tyler Hesch's design and made it made it into three D. And you know, not for nothing, like considering that they took the approach of let's throw a cartoon in live action. That is that is so hit and miss because. You know, yes, we have had movies that managed to do that very well. Like, you know, Who Framed Roger Rabbit and Detective Pikachu did that very well. But we've also had other movies like, you know, Cool World, for example, where it just clashed and just did not work. It's like the Sonic movie, I think given, I think with the new model, I think it works. You know, could it have been better? Sure. Would it have been better if it was all animated? Absolutely. But given with what we had and pretty much what they had to do at last minute, yeah, it works. Oh, oh yeah, De ab absolutely. I mean, it's like, yeah, I mean, it's like, see, with the newer model, yeah, it works a hell of a lot better. And it's like, I I'm kind of worried how, like, j just trying to imagine it, I'm kind of curious at the same time on how it like on just how much like all the moments of this movie would fall flat on his face if they kept the newer model oh dear god it would die yeah it, on the first frame <laughs> <laughs> it would it would it would die it would die the moment we would hear sonic say meow and then, and then finally, and then finally, that movie would have something in common with Birds of Prey. Nobody would be in the theater. <laughs> speaking, speaking of which, oh, so yes. what? What? Okay, so, so I think. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's just get this whole argument out of the way, because I know, like everybody, like I've been watching, like you know, Clownfish TV on YouTube. And a big thing that I know they were talking about because everybody in the media was fucking talking about this was, you know, how is Birds of Prey gonna stack up against Sonic the fucking Hedgehog? You should not be allowed to make that comparison, but here we are. That being said, it's amazing. Like, I'm seeing now, like, you know, people, like, even, like, in the media, they're actually acknowledging, because before... You know, when the, when the studio said, hey, we're going to remark, the, you know, we heard what everyone's saying. And you know what? We're going to go back and rework the model. And that was such a rare thing. Because seriously, how many times has, you know, there been a movie adaptation of some kind of property, people voice their concerns, and they flat out ignore them. Or they say, well, if you don't like it, then you are whatever the buzzword is of the week. Ghostbusters. So, <coughs> Yeah, 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 really. And it's like, 
Meanwhile, you know, I remembered when the studio said, hey, we're going to rework the model. And like all these news outlets were talking about how they're pandering to the toxic fans and they're not appreciating the cinematic. And they're not. Yeah. And like the the sit and the cinema, they're not respecting the cinematic art. Well, guess who's fucking banking now, bitches? <laughs> Look what's happened. They actually, yeah, it's like they heard what they said. They they reworked the model. They were even getting people who were, you know, familiar with the franchise, have worked with Sega, have worked on the games. They, they even Hesh. got them. Yeah, they got them. Yeah, they were getting people to come in and help and turn the whole goddamn thing around. Hell, just the fact that you have a company that said, hey, we're going to do this. I remembered even seeing on Twitter people saying, look, I still have really no interest in or, you know, any kind of relation with Sonic or its fan base whatsoever, but they still want to go and support the studio because they actually listen to the fans. And Sonic is rolling in bank right now. So now it's like, okay, guys, you know, it does pay to listen to the fans because it's not everybody that voices concerns is whatever your flavor buzzword is of the week you know these are people that you know they genuinely have concerns for what you're doing it's like it pays to listen every once in a while you know because you know yeah that could have been your money yeah here's the funny thing though because i do remember that it's like I remember the the arguments people. I was like, "Oh, they're pandering to the odds." I was just, you know what? As a longtime Sonic fan, I can tell you firsthand. This is probably the first time where this is a universal. What the hell are you doing to our boy? And not in the most, <laughs> and not in a why is his arms blue kind of way, but in a serious, what the fuck is that kind of way? Like, there's a like, difference what? between toxic and actually worried about how this going and literally they they spoke up and they were like look we actually want to see this succeed but what you're doing now no because even somebody that doesn't even know sonic that well can seriously look at that and go what is that like you could try and they did and now it's like and it's funny because you did bring up birds of prey right yeah yeah it, yeah. Here's a funny thing about that. Like, first off, why would you compare a rated R movie to a PG movie? That's that's funny. Uh, second, know. people are weird. Secondly, um, here's the other difference: Birds of Prey barely even got any advertising until like the last. The only way Birds of Prey got any advertising is if you went to the movie theaters and you saw the previews, or like the last five days before it was going to play in theaters. That was the only time Birds of Prey ever gotten talked about. It was barely on TV, barely on any social media sites. Sonic, yeah. though. Right. Sonic, though. Yes, oh, Sonic were was just watching. all the talk. Yeah, this there's even in Sonic Dash where they advertised it by saying you can actually play as the movie Sonic. Right. And so it kills me now because everybody's like going. And also, I, I hate I, now that you, God damn it, Danny, now that you brought up about birds playing the whole thing. <laughs> I'm what makes sorry. it, what, what makes it, and what makes it interesting now is that that same thing where people were like, oh, look at, look at the, look at Paramount taking the risk and pandering to the crowd. And it's like, okay. And now everybody's like, oh, the reason why people don't like Birds of Prey is because it's an all female, it's an all female cast movie. I'm like, no, people don't like the movie because it's a sequel to Suicide Squad. And it's got the same writers that half assed everything and literally just slapped Harley Quinn in a title because they thought that Margo Margo could carry that shit on her back. No. Yeah, really. I you mean li- to be you yeah, literally to be made on, a movie yeah, I mean, with yeah, little that- to no character development. Shut up. <laughs> Yeah, like, I mean, cause, and all, that's why I'm not in a rush to go see Birds of Prey because I didn't care for Suicide Squad. Why would I want to see a sequel to it? Yeah, I no, mean, nobody wants to see your discount Guardians of the Galaxy. Also, here's right, the funny so, part, right? I love how people are, like, full-on supporting Margo's, Margo's characterization of Harley Quinn, yet they shit it on her in Suicide Squad. <laughs> you fucking hypocrites. Get out of here. You fucking sat there when she was in Suicide Squad and you sat there and insulted her and said, oh, oh, look, she comes off like a cheap floozy. 
This was men and women saying that about her character in Suicide okay, Squad. Then. Now all of a sudden you want to talk about and say, oh, well, you know, she's a strong, powerful woman. Fuck you. Fuck all of you. Get out of here, you hypocrites. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, it's, well, it's like I said, it, uh, we, we, yeah, it, it's so weird to think that, like, you know, it was like, yeah, because, like, Birds of Prey came out, like, the week before or something, and it's like, yeah, people were, it's like, yeah, they were trying to pit a superhero movie to Sonic the fucking Hedgehog. And DC Sonic the no fucking list, Hedgehog right? won. Yeah, and Sonic the Hedgehog is fucking winning. I mean, it's like, <laughs> and I, I say this as a Sonic fan, but are we in, like, the Twilight Zone or something? 57 <laughs> million and counting. We found yeah, we I mean, found the one superhero who could beat Superman. Yeah, I mean it's like I mean I'm not saying that you know I mean I know Birds of Prey Birds of Prey made their money and but they're not wow. raking in the Sonic not not they're not raking in the Sonic dough. Oh, it beat Detective Pikachu on the weekends, which, which I am yeah, also, I, which I, I heard I'm I heard about surprised that. about. I remember I remember see, seeing like everybody going on about oh uh, by the way uh, Sonic the movie um. Made a better, made the best uh, opening a weekend in the box office when it comes to a video game adaptation in a movie. Better than Detective Pikachu. It's like, I'm, I'm sorry, what? Oh, yeah. Get I, out of here. There is it, no it, way. I was stoked. Oh, yeah. I, it's like, I, it's like I, I, again, I say this is a Sonic fan, but what kind of Twilight Zone are we in right now? Please let me stay here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cause, 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 cause I, cause Give I me mean a reason like, to love my boy again. Cause, cause I, cause I mean it's like over. Cause I mean it's like, all right. It's like Sonic the Hedgehog on the movie. Like before we even actually get into like um the core parts of like how we feel about like certain parts of the movie or whatever. I mean it's like, I mean it. it I mean Detective Pikachu for what it's worth, you know. It was it was a really good like a uh, live action you know adaptation for a for Pokemon of all things. It was fantastic or whatever. Sonic the Hedgehog. It's like oh yeah, it was a fantastic movie. But for I don't know. Like at the time, I'm just thinking, all right, y yeah, this is pretty much like um, it, it pro the story pro more or less probably won't stand out as much as Detective Pikachu. And oh man, I I get the feeling I was probably dead wrong on that one, considering how yeah, like when we said freaking Sonic the movie did much better on an opening weekend compared to Detective Pikachu. <laughs> and like we said, it's still and now right now it's number one. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, here I am thinking, oh, 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 they say that for for all or a lot of movies. Oh, people are saying this is the number one movie in America. They're saying this film, one two months later, is gonna be number one movie in the world. And now they're saying this for Sonic the Hedgehog the movie. I'm like, okay, they they they're pro I mean, look, I mean, kudos to them, but it's like they're probably just saying that just to say it. They they do that for a lot of movies. Oh shit! It really yeah, is number one in the world. Well, goddamn! All right. Well, call. Well, <laughs> slap me in the face. Suck on that, Mario. <laughs> well, technically, technically, the Mario, the new Mario movie, I think comes out in like two years or something. Like they're in the middle of working on that one, and now it's like, okay, balls in your court, Illumination. We know that out outside of your Minions franchise, you are very hit and miss. We're riding on a pretty goddamn good gravy train right now, as far as like you know. Video game adaptations starting to get good. Do not fuck this up. And then they turned the Goombas into minions. You had one job, guys. <laughs> you had one job, you pieces of shit. <laughs> and you fucked it up. Congratulations. Oh, you truly do not God. know how to do anything. <laughs> your IQ is that. Your IQ is literally the equivalent of your own minion creation. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh Fuck. man! <laughs> yeah, because because I mean, can, like, can you no, see I don't like illumination at all. No, no, I, no, 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 no. I, 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 no, I, I understand. It, like I said, out, you know, their, their minions franchise tends to bake bank, but outside of it, it's they, they have been very hit and miss. And I think like a lot of people, that's where a lot of people are really concerned where it's like, okay, you gave like the biggest, you know, video game mascot ever. You gave it to those guys. Mm. It's like that's where I think people look. And again, you know, we are kind of on a we're all kind of getting on a little gravy train right now because it's like Sonic's doing Sonic is doing well. 
Detective Pikachu did well. I heard that I think it was the second Angry Birds movie was actually very well. So it's like, okay, we're starting. It looks like we're starting to come around now. And it's like we're actually starting to have consistency. You know, it's not like, oh, we just have like a couple of outliers that are just, yeah, this one was all right where everything else sucked. It's like, no, the past couple of movies we've had have been slowly but steadily getting better. So it's like, do, Illumination, do not screw this up. Ah, uh, please. <laughs> but, but anyway, let's actually start talking about the movie now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right. Let's, let's talk about our good boy. All right, so so I guess the movie um, it's the movie starts off I guess technically as a narrative, and I and I put yes. heavy quotations under the name uh the word uh narrative, because we only because it's like I mean thank God I mean thank God that if they were seriously gonna pull off the whole narrative approach with something like this, like thank God they did not take a page from Metroid Other M and basically made it make it just as big of a narrative as that game because my God, that would have been annoying as hell. Yeah. No no no. I, it's like we it's get we, more like a it, it follows that trope that I remember in Emperor's New Groove where you see a part that happens and he goes, Huh. So I bet you're wondering how this happened. <laughs> Hi, yeah. I'm Sonic. So you're wondering how I got into this situation. <laughs> it's that's, literally that. <laughs> that's more yeah, or less yeah, what you're happens. Right. It's like we get a, we get a, we start the movie starts off with a wide shot of San Francisco, right? Everything seems peaceful, and then the next thing you know, we we get we get a sh we end up like transitioning into this chase scene that was going on between Doctor Robotnik and Sonic the Hedgehog, and out of and then out of nowhere, it freeze frames frames during the mid chase you know as they're passing by mega drive <laughs> but um bomb <laughs> no but wait no i'm not even joking that's actually one of the many easter eggs they implemented into the movie if you look at the background oh, yeah. as to, as as the freaking um as he's about to start the narrative if you look in the background there's a street sign that literally says mega drive on it <laughs> So it's oh, like... this! Oh, this movie! This movie is littered with Sonic yeah. Easter eggs. It's yeah. kind which, of, it's I mean, kind of honestly, amazing. Yeah, it's honestly, kind of amazing. Which honestly, you know, for a movie like this, I actually I like it when companies do decide to do that because, like, when you have something that's like such a big name or something, you kind of want to have the fan service in there. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. And that that yeah. was just that was just and... one of the many few Easter eggs that I ran into when I when I saw this movie. So, well, so let alone a lot of the, well, well, let alone a lot of these Easter eggs. Let's get also give credit to this. It's like you know, a lot of the Sonic Easter eggs are actually pretty subtle. Like yeah, it's like you know, Mega Drive. It's yeah, it's like yeah, that's like kind of like a blink and you'll miss it or something. You know, it's not like you know, oh, they're constantly throwing Sonic memes in your face and to the point where it's like we get it. Just uh, knock it off. We get it. We don't want to be pandered to with all the memes and the references. We get it. It's like, you know, there are a couple that are very obvious, but there's also a lot that were really subtle. And it's like, I actually really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, me too. It, 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 they're handled very well. Um, but, but, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, going back to what you were saying earlier, Brian, yeah, that's pretty much how, like, the beginning of the film was handled. It's like, they freeze frame in the middle of the seat, the chasing, and they're just like, hey, I'm Sonic. You may be wondering how I got into this situation. Well, let's go back to it. I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> it all started back in 1991. <laughs> also, can I just say, they literally use the Sonic Mania opening theme. <laughs> they, they do! <laughs> <laughs> for green for for this rendition, this beautiful rendition of what looks like Green Hill Zone. Yeah. I am upset right now. What? <laughs> I I I noticed the Easter egg for Mega Drive, but I didn't notice that they used the opening theme for Sonic Mania when they were showing up <laughs> Green Hill Zone during the beginning of the flashback. <laughs> Well, I broke up I again. That. <laughs> okay, get the uh, get the rubber cement. We got to put them back together. <laughs> the, hey, hey, listen, listen, Ryan. We'll buy another set of tickets. We'll see the movie again. Oh, uh, oh yeah, sure. I don't mind seeing the movie a third time. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I forgot to mention. I saw this movie twice. 
I am not ashamed. I'm probably to gonna, it. I'm probably gonna see this movie twice too. I'll be real with you. Same. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, it's like, I mean, considering how much effort they put into into making this movie, like more so to fix it to help please, like to help please, like a lot of the a lot of these people that show their concerns or whatever. It's like, okay, I'm not just doing this because I'm like a Sonic fan or whatever. I felt obligated to show some additional support because of how much they, again, because of how much they try to fix everything. It's like, seriously, this movie honestly deserves it. Like, regardless of how anyone feels about how, like, the story of this movie pretty much played out. It's like, I can't help but f- show additional support for it. Yeah, it's, it's as Loudon said earlier, an entire FX, FX company did not shut down just for this movie to bomb. Yeah, pretty much. So, um, this probably is good. So... Yeah, we get him narrating what he used to do, and uh, again, uh, hearing Ben Schwartz speak as Sonic is wonderful because yep. Ben Schwartz is a national treasure. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. then suddenly Babby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, we, we yes we get it. We get our first official uh, look at a uh, at a baby Sonic, or well, you know, you know what people refer to as baby Sonic is like okay, that's no baby, that's a kid, that's kid Sonic right there, kid I'm Sonic. Sorry. Give that is, him that respect. He is he is <laughs> precious baby. He's no he, he's he's no baby anymore. <laughs> but I love but here's another thing though when they we did show off. I love the owl. Oh, oh yeah. yes, yes. Th- this yes. this is actually for, for, I, I do what, like that. I do like the owl as well because it's like we see so- we see Kid Sonic running around and Sonic is basically saying I w- I have this very incredible power and a lot of people w- were wanting to get their hands on it and I was told you know to just keep it hidden but but hey I was a kid so I did the exact opposite and yeah that's what we get introduced to um Sonic's um caretaker or mother figure as it were um as Sonic yeah. puts it in the movie uh, the uh, the uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, of this movie, I guess. Um, yeah, we can introduce yeah. to uh, lo- she's no- she's named a Long Claw. Yeah, Long Claw like was one- uh, fun. Yeah, like one of like the few times where we actually see some kind of a parental figure in Sonic's life. Because I mean, that tends to change depending on what it is you're watching. Like, yeah. you watch like wa- watch Sonic so- watch Sonic Sat AM, and pretty much like I guess like the parental figure, if you can call him that, was probably Uncle Chuck. Yeah. Watch us. Uh, watch Sonic Underground. He had siblings and a mom. I think the comics had their own interpretation. Like there yeah. really isn't the- like there really isn't a set canon like in the games as far as family for Sonic. So it's like okay, we got to make up something for the movie. But I did like this approach. Yeah. yeah uh, so yeah. I'm like, sorry. I-, I wanted to say too because it's like. God damn it, YouTube. I was trying to avoid as many of the spoiler uploaded clips that people were posting of the movie because, you know, despite when people, despite, you know, saying, oh, don't record things in movies, that's illegal. People, people do that. Doing it. Yeah, people do it anyway. And like, I was having like my recommendations, like getting flooded with these clips. I'm like, no, no, stop it. I need to see the movie for myself. I don't want more spoilers <laughs> or anything. And then, like, I went to the movie only knowing what the trailers showed off. And then I saw that opening scene, and I'm just like, okay, I was expecting a fun, action-filled Sonic movie. I was not expecting this as my opening. <laughs> right. I was not but, expecting this either. But uh, to further on your on your end, Danny, because um, you're right. Um, Sonic in all media has always had, well, just the animated media, not the game media, has always had a set of parents. Like, Sat AM, it was Uncle Chuck underground it was queen alina manic and sonia and the archie comics it was jules it was jules and bernadette oh okay all right and even with the comics because i know even then there's different there's different iterations like you have the archie Mm -hmm. comics we've got the idw i think it's called right now like the the, the one the one that you're the one you're really getting into right now yeah yeah. Oh yeah. God, yeah. And totally yeah. It. And then and uh, then I and then I think wasn't there, wasn't there like a brand of comics in the UK? There was Sonic the comic. Yeah. Um. No, he did not have parents in that. Yeah. Super Sonic was evil in those comics. Oh Jesus Christ! That whole that whole comic series was kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic I'll, was a I'll, douche. I'll... Like a t- 
total I'll, douche. Oh God, I will take your word for it. <laughs> he called he called Tails a pixel brain, like it was bad. Like every Rude. time, like every time something happened to Tails, he's like, "Well, nothing of value will be lost." Like he was an asshole. <laughs> well, that's a load off my back. <laughs> no, seriously, that's literally how he acted. But um, yeah. I loved Long Claw. I thought it was great. And I love the part, though, right, where she's, like, telling him, you know, you have to be careful because you're, if someone ever notices your powers, they will use it for evil purposes. And then all of a sudden, Echidnas. Like, <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, the tribe of Echidnas, that... they show up out of the freaking blue. They're just like, oh, hey, we notice this guy has very incredible power. We're going to take it for away from you now. Yeah, like, that, that took me by surprise. Like, you know... I figured it's like, okay, there's got to be some way to get Sonic out of, you know, Sonic Land and into, you know, the, and into planet Earth. I was not expecting, like, the Echidna tribe from the flashbacks of Sonic Adventure 1 with, like, what, like, Tikal's father, like, was, like, Kachamak or whatever the hell his yeah. name was. Yeah. I was, I was, I was not expecting that those tribes of Echidnas just... Coming in and invading. Yeah, I, not neither was I. It's like I was expecting at least to just see just one animated blue hedgehog. I was not expecting a tribe of echidnas to also make an appearance in this movie, and sure enough, they did. I I will say this though: the minute I saw that scene, and after it got done playing out, I'm just like. I swear to God, Ken Penders, if you try to sue this movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it's, can it's, like, we, it's like, Ken, we will go to your house if you even try, you son of a bitch. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So so the uh, Sonic Adventure Tribe of Echidnas. Yeah, yes, it's like, e even though Sonic is going at like the speed of sound or whatever. Yeah, I, I guess the this uh, these Echidnas somehow took notice that oh yeah oh hey there's his little blue hedgehog with incredible power let's inv let's go ahead and attack long claw and sonic in their in their humble home and try to take it for ourselves so the kidnas attack long claw and sonic long claw gets sonic and tries to and they try to escape unfortunately long claw gets struck by an arrow from which was fired by one of the echidnas and Who apparently is hanzo because he sniped the shit <laughs> God, yeah, God actually, yeah, they, yeah, they got, yeah, he got her like right in the wing. He sniped the hell out of her. I was like, well, not only is this a kidness, but apparently one of them is a descendant of Hanzo or some shit because he sniped the absolute shit out of this. Where's Where's Genji when you need him? Where's Genji to deflect? <laughs> we need that. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no kidding. Oh my God. And yet, and so, so yes, Longclaw being unable to fly or whatever, she tells Sonic to just get out, to just get out of there. And this is where we are introduced to, um, I mean, we granted we saw this gimmick as uh, being shown off like, uh, with, uh, within the first, um, well, actually within the Bolts trailers, actually. But, but yeah, now we get a little bit more, um, we get a better look. And how this gimmick works, where um, Longclaw gives a Sonic this a bag of rings, and each ring, um, um, uh, if the user like sets his mind on a certain location, by the time the ring gets thrown or whatever, the ring gets turned into a portal that will lead him to the very world the user was thinking of. So basic, so basically, they're referencing the living daylights out of the bonus rings that you would normally see at the end of each level with like Sonic One or Sonic Three, if you get like more than fifty rings or something like that. They yeah, play, the, they the, play the off rings. of that pretty much. Yeah, I, I honestly love that little touch because I mean, it's like, my God, you could, again, like, if this was any other company or any other movie, they would have made up some kind of a freaking MacGuffin. But no, they actually stuck with the classic canon and they use warp rings. Which I was thoroughly surprised and I was also happy to see. I was like, yo, when have I ever, I haven't seen warp rings since 7 a.m. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, that when I saw like they use this as the reason why Sonic made his way to Earth, to me, that was literally a breath of fresh air. Because upon seeing like like especially from the first trailer, 
I was worried that they were essentially going to use the exact same gimmick that they've done, like, in earlier, like, 90s movies or even, like, early 2000s movies where some, something like, say, uh, like, uh, like a talking dog from outer space just crash lands onto <laughs> Earth and he's just like, I have come here from the home star. And they, you know, freaking, uh, they, they, they uh, go, they uh, mess around with, like, this kid or something. I was worried to death that they were li seriously going to take something as cheesy and generic of a story as that and implement that into a live into a sonic film or whatever but no they take this approach and it's like okay this is something new and on top of that it stays true to what is being shown in the official sonic canon pretty much so it's like okay thank you okay i can rest easy now ye yeah. Uh, right. but, uh, but, but yes, it's like, we've shown off the warp ring, and yeah, Longclaw basically says, I'll basically tell Sonic, alright, this is based, this will lead you to a place in a, in a, the far side of the universe, keep these rings on you, and only travel to another world if so, anyone else ever discovers your power. Now, get out of here and just keep on running. So Sonic is about, ju just does that at first, he starts running, and then at the very last second, he's like, no, I gotta go back and help save Longclaw, I'm coming Longclaw, and then just when he was about to go back through the portal, it just disintegrates on him. Oh my god, r really. It's like, I'm not gonna lie. That kind of got me in the feels. Oh yeah, it was like, ah. Uh... Like, this movie just started. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> right? I was like, it's not even five minutes. What are you doing? I mean, I mean, it's like if we got if we had more of like if we had more time to like like let the, like the whole environment or like the whole um this whole part of the story like just sink in a little bit where we got more time to see Longclaw and Kid Sonic and the world that they were living in at the time, you know, Green Hill Zone, then I, that probably would have gotten me in the feels even more. But I mean, it's like, uh, I mean, it's like it, it got, it did the job, it did the job uh, well enough in this case. Uh, but, but yeah, and then 10 years later, present day, in Green Hills, Montana. <laughs> God damn, I hate that. I just sat there going, uh. <laughs> I think everybody did a collective groan on that one. The 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 one the adults that were watching the kids though they were just like, oh Green Hills. We er, the adults were like, uh. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's, but, it's like, yeah, they, they, the kids don't know better. Right. Yeah, it's like I I could have sworn that it's like even like during the filming they even established it's like okay uh just to make this as legit as possible we are filming in Green Hills, just letting everyone know this is being filmed in Green Hills. Right, but um, we get a thing of Sonic being on Earth. Got his little his little kid den. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His <laughs> own his own man cave, as it were. Oh my god. Yeah, continue, my, I'm continue. not gonna lie, my favorite part is when he's reading the Flash comic books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that that was great. Yeah, he's reading all these Flash comics at the speed of sound. He's playing pinball with himself. And oh wait. Oh wait a second. Hold on. I'm trying to remember, like, okay, I hold on. <laughs> like before even that happens, um, I mean, it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, yes, this whole, this whole, this whole thing ties into like how Sonic has been living his life on Earth like during the past ten years. But we also get a brief glimpse at another main protagonist of ours, uh, Tom, um, Tom, uh, oh, Tom, uh, Lord. I, I cannot pronounce. Wachowski. I can't what, what was his last name? Wachowski. Wachowski. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yes, we, yes, we get to our main protagonist, uh. Tom, uh, oh god damn it. Okay, it's let's call him Donut Lord, okay? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Sonic, Sonic calls him Donut Lord for a reason. Yeah, yeah. He fucking talks to donuts. It's great. <laughs> yeah, he, he, at one point, he literally does talk to a donut because he, he's just that bored. <laughs> It's a small town. What is he supposed to do? Huh? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Tom is a police officer in Green Hills, and because yeah, because Green Hills is a small town, there's hardly any hardly anything happens. 
So the so, funnest thing he usually does is just put a spin out a sp- uses the uh, speed gun on a turtle. Well, there, buddy, going fast, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just sat there going, "What the fuck? Oh my god, James Marsden, just shut up." I mean- <laughs> It's, it's one of the it's one of those moments where you can freely recognize. Oh my god, this is so dumb! But, but you, you can't, can't but, it, but you can't laugh. help but laugh. Yeah, you can't like, help but laugh. God, you are being such a chad right now. What the <laughs> fuck? He's like, I just look at it. I'm like, yeah, I'd probably do the same thing. <laughs> and, and what so- made it funny though, right? Is Sonic is like testing out, is like go blazing through just to check his score all the time. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. he. Sonic speed sp- past like the speedometer once is like two hundred ninety six miles per hour. Sonic Sonic in the background is like, oh man, I could do better than that. Goes through, goes past it a second time, and even three hundred miles per hour. And we see him in the background. It's like, yes, nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Beat my record. Oh, an ass. oh, and he takes yeah. the turtle. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, yes! It's like Sonic saves his turtle from being run over by a truck. Son, and then Sonic like shows pity for the turtle, saying, "Oh, oh man, it must be a real drag being slow all the time." All right, you know what? Today's your lucky day. And we, and yes, Sonic like runs at the speed of sound while holding the turtle in his hands. And oh my god, I tell you what, th- like we just got started with this film. That was probably like the. Like, this is probably the most wholesome scene I have ever seen in the entire movie. I mean, putting aside the fact that they accompanied the scene with Don't Stop Me Now by Queen, <laughs> a very fitting oh, song on this occasion. It was amazing. Dude, dude, the whole soundtrack of this movie was freaking amazing. Oh my god, it, it, it's yes, it so... Was. Yeah, just like any other Sonic game, the soundtrack fucking rules in this movie. But, and yeah, we see, we see Don't Stop Me Now by Queen while Sonic is running with the turtle and we see the turtle have the biggest grin on his face. <laughs> he is just... He is living life right now. The turtle is living life. That is until and Sonic... Then- yeah, that is until ac- Sonic accidentally like uh, uh, loses grip of the turtle. He is flying backwards, but it's okay. Sonic speeds right back and then catches him. But that to- but unfortunately, that totally did not scar the turtle for life. I'm just saying. <laughs> right. So- Sonic puts him down, and the turtle's just shaking in fear. <laughs> Sonic is like, "Okay, right, let's just pretend that you didn't see me. All right, I was never here." Pew! <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. oh, yes. It, yes, and it continues with Sonic, you know, doing his own thing. Yeah, with the comics and ping pong, showing off his nunchucks, backing himself in the face with said nunchucks, saying, like, um, I've just been having the best time on Earth. It's been great. <laughs> there is one part, though, that also I kind of noticed, but also I was like, this is another, I think this is another callback in fan service. The part where he's in the he's in the doctor's office and he's analyzing himself yeah. by doing a by doing a Sigmund Freud impression, <laughs> and I realize like, oh my god, that is so Jillian White. I fucking love it <laughs> <laughs> because in the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic always would do this one thing where he would always imitate other characters just to mess with Scratch and Gra- Grounder. Oh my yeah. god, that's right. Oh. So so I was like, yo, that's such a Jillian White thing to do. What? <laughs> <laughs> that be, but then that you realize kind of disappointed there was no uh, Julia White cameo. I'm just saying. Oh man, I would have dude, the little the little kid in me would have been like, ah! Oh just suck! <laughs> Lost my mind. <laughs> Y'all don't even know. I grew up with I grew I grew up with Julia White. Steve Urkel, and, Sonic and, and yeah, a, a lot, a lot of us did. Yes, but um, it also shows that Sonic's a sad boy, though. Yeah, which honestly, I gotta say, I thought it was a very interesting direction that they took. With oh this yeah, character. yeah, that's like the one because I, I even when I was sitting in the theater, I was like, you know, because even I'm thinking like, you know, okay. 
you know, Sonic characters should not be difficult to nail down. And yet, you know, we see people like all the time, you know, mess up his character in one way or another. But the movie actually tapped into like given Sonic's given the situation that they put Sonic in, they actually tried to tap into, you know, his loneliness. And that's a major theme throughout the movie. And I mean, yeah, I'm with you, Brian. It's like, I was honestly not expecting them to go in that direction because really when you think about Sonic in the games and the comics and everything, that's a side of Sonic we have honestly never seen before. No one's really explored it. Sonic's the kind of character that usually just makes friends easily. I mean, this is the guy that, you know, you have characters like Shadow and Silver who at one point or another tried to kill him. And, you know, not only are, not only did he become cool in the end, but it's like, hey, man, you want to go play some Smash Brothers? Like, they become so but they become so buddy-buddy in the end. That's just the kind of character Sonic is. It's like, he's just the kind of guy that just attracts friends. But, you know, seeing him being, like, you know, the, you know, genuinely lonely, not edgelord lonely, and lonely like, you know, err, you know, oh, woe is me, everybody sucks, everything, you know, he's not pulling a shadow here. But, no, genuine loneliness because he, you know, he fell in love with Green Hills. He genuinely loves this little town. He, you know, from what he's seeing, he loves the town. He loves the people. But given his circumstance, he, yeah, he's like, I can't, I can't interact with these people. I can't reveal myself because they're not going to take, they're not going to take my presence well at all. And I will pretty much be forced to leave. So for years, He's been living in Green Hills and just kind of been watching from the outside. And it's like, I did not expect this direction, but, you know, hot damn, you actually found a side of Sonic that nobody thought of before. Kudos to you guys. Oh, yeah, it's like I may have been, you know, just pretty much stalking like uh, Tom and his, and his wife. Uh, uh, oh, God, what was her name? Maddie? Maddie. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, I, yeah, I may have been like, you know, just like pretty much like a watching over Tom and his wife, uh, Maddie for, for God knows how long, but it's like, uh, you, you know, this is the closest thing I'm ever going to get to a family without actually interacting with them. So it checks out. I, I do love the part he calls a pretzel lady. He's yeah, like, I love the nicknames he gives everyone. Yeah. So as I said, yeah, you're like, Sonic so so refers to Tom Cr as the donut Lord. Um, yeah, yes, uh, Sonic refers to, uh, Maddie as the pretzel lady, because- Because she does yoga. <laughs> yes. And then it's like, oh, and don't even- oh, and then there's Crazy Carl. Crazy Carl. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Blue Devil. <laughs> Blue Devil, I know you're real! <laughs> Which, by the way, crazy. Uh, by the way, that's that leads to that correlates to another Easter egg where it's like we first see Crazy Carl saying, "I saw the Blue Devil last night." Here's a picture of him, and it's literally the sand, it's Sanic. The, the Sanic drawing <laughs> that he shows everyone. I'm like, oh my God, guys, you beautiful bastards! <laughs> it's like seriously, great. they threw they dude, they've thrown so many memes in there and shit. I mean, it's like it's one of those things like. On one hand, I'm glad they didn't do it, but at the same time, you just you kind of unfortunately can't help but ask. It's like, my God, where was the Sonichu reference? <laughs> oh, God, no. No. Because unfortunately, Sonichu is heavily ingrained in, like, Sonic memedom that it's just like, you reference Sonic, but you don't a Sonic 2 reference in there at some point. It's like, I, 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 was, I was really, I was really expecting like, maybe somebody's wearing a fucking medallion or something. Just some blink and you'll miss it reference to Sonic 2, just because of how, you know, deeply ingrained in Sonic meme them it is. And well, yeah, yeah, no, well, they, they actually held back. Well, there is a reference to that. It's called the box office budget. Uh... Brian is not exactly wrong. I remember seeing an article that was really titled Sonic Tops Pikachu in the box office with the best selling, uh, with the best opening of box office. Uh, whatever oh you got a my. So and I see in highlighted Sonic Tops Pikachu. No. No. Yeah. I saw that picture. Uh. What would Donut Lord think, Sonic? <laughs> 
Uh, meow. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> no, Bye. Sonic. It's called doggy style. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. I just like meow. <laughs> it's like, dude. It's like seriously, no, dude. Like you do. I mean, do it I, wrong. It, I mean, it's like it's... you know. I get. Again, I am. I get. You know, there's like. Again, on one hand, thank you for you know, exercising restraint on Sonichu, but at the same time, and I mean, let's just not lie to ourselves. You know, the you know sick sadistic side of ourselves probably wish that there was some kind of a reference, if only to see Chris Chan just spurg out on Twitter and make such an ass out of himself that it makes him relevant again. <laughs> oh yes, but anywho, moving on to the. Uh, to the rest of the movie, so it's like, yeah. So we've got, we got, uh, we got Mr. Human Standin. We got our Sanix. You know, introduced a couple of other little characters, like yeah, like the wife and you know, Crazy Carl. Um, some of the other cops that uh, that Tom works with at the office, where you know, again, they're all just kind of sitting there, just doing, literally twiddling their thumbs in the office because nothing is happening, <laughs> and nothing will ever happen. Oh, hey, Tomo, we're gonna we're gonna need backup right away. Uh, there's a mass shooting near the grocery store. <laughs> no, I'm just ki- I'm just kidding, Tom. Some some goose just stole a bagel. But no, seriously, they do need backup for that. They want it back. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, Wade is funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's like he he literally, he literally plays off as the moron, it, like the town idiot in this particular in this particular movie. But it's like, oh my god! It's like on one hand, I'm just like, why would you even say that? You don't joke about shit like that. But at the same time, it's like, okay, come on! I can't help but laugh at that. It's like, come on. <laughs> Yeah, but ultimate, yeah, but pretty much ultimately it leads to like you know it's the scene where Sonic's on the baseball diamond and he's just pretty much playing a game of baseball by himself and like you know pretty much kind of venting his own frustrations with his loneliness that he pretty much goes like you know supersonic speed generates lightning and pretty much creates like this electromagnetic pulse that just causes a blackout in the town and you know everyone's like okay his power line must have gone down or something but this ends up summoning what everyone probably agrees is the best part of the movie jim carrey as dr robotnik yes <laughs> yeah like yeah the military like, yeah it's like the pentagon agrees saying like um or all right, I know this may sound crazy, but we don't have much of a choice. Give me Dr. Robotnik. And literally everyone else is like, okay, how about any option? Any other option at all? Why you got to bring that weird creepo into this scenario? Yeah, like, I know, I know, like, a lot of people, even, like, back from, like, the first trailer, like, that was probably, like, even, like, back then, that was the one thing that a lot of people from the get-go were agreeing that, like, yeah, you know what? We actually like Jim Carrey's performance from what we're seeing so far. If anything, he probably is going to be the best part of the movie. And yeah, he kind of was. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. Jim, yes, Doctor, yes. It's like the military is like pretty much like a take, they take a refuge um, at the baseball diamond where the incident supposed the incident occurred, and get drug pulls up, and 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 that's when we reve- see Doctor Robotnik. Oh in in his glory, so 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 Brian, let me ask you: like, what did you think of Jim Carrey as Doctor Robotnik in this first opening scene? I loved it, Ron. It... <laughs> I... <laughs> oh, is that what we're doing? <laughs> I, I apologize. I can't resist. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> the circumference of our minds. <laughs> <laughs> the, the doctor says you're basic. Oh, hey, hey, I love stone. how they did a long-winded thing of just him say. It, I, I love how it's just it was just a long-winded explanation of why this general was below him. I f- <laughs> well, like I know, like uh, some of the interviews that happened like before the movie came out. I know Jim Carrey was just totally on board with like performing as a character who was essentially a villain who was. Overly monotonous, who is overly egotistical about himself. Like, he Which likes that angle. 
which is Eggman in a nutshell. Yeah, like he's like he's full of himself. He thinks he's better than everyone. He's he feels he's this high and mighty kind of guy, and it just makes it all the more satisfying when you just see his eventual downfall. Because it's like, yeah, you had that coming, motherfucker. Yeah, and, and yeah, and I mean, it's like, yeah, and I mean, yes. Jim Carrey pretty much was channeling, like, you know, his 90s energy from, like, you know, Ace Ventura, The Mask, you know, the stuff that put him on the map. And, I mean, it's, like, it's been a very long time that we've seen him do that. And it's, like, my God, man. He still has that energy. He can still pull it off. And, you know, admittedly, like, you know, again, you know, by the fault of that initial trailer giving the wrong impression... You know, I I was even just initially thinking like, okay, yeah, I mean, I'm sure he'll probably have a couple of chuckles, but you know, where everyone's saying, oh, he's gonna, you know, he's gonna be the sole reason to see this movie, and for me, I was just initially like, yeah, no, not even, not even this would make me want to see this movie. Oh my god, am I glad to be wrong? <laughs> I am so glad to be wrong here, because oh my god, like. It's like, yeah, he's, he can still do it, and let, let alone, you know, that kind of comedic energy and that kind of craziness. And that's not the kind of craziness you can just throw in any movie. You know, you just, yeah, and make it work. Somehow, he made it work for Sonic the fucking Hedgehog. I love when they're doing the, I love when he's trying to, like, get the, uh, when they're, Print when they're uh, analyzing Sonic's footprint, and he's like, "Tell me, Agent Stone, what do you see?" And then he, after he tells him, he's like, "Uh huh, yes. See, that's what you would normally see. But for but for myself, I have spent most of my life being trained by the very mysterious, you know, like insert Indian." Indian tribe here, and he's like, so my eyes have been trained to see everything. <laughs> and just for like two seconds, he's just staring at the screen, hits a few buttons, and he goes, this species, this species of animal is not on this earth. And I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. This is something else. I'm sitting also, going, oh my god. This is good. Also, also, is it just me? I just have to ask, because I know when I was sitting in the theaters, I was just wondering, like, you know, is this a, like a possible homage or something? But like, yeah, that Agent Stone, like, you know, his, you know, quiddling little yes man that was with him. Like, is this supposed to be an homage to Snively from Sad AM? Not really. I think it's more along the lines. Well, it's kind of like an homage to the idea. Because also think about it like this, because this is how I've noticed it. Um, this is the beginning. So, so so this is kind of like a beginning. This is like their own take on it. So Robotnik has this side has this, you know, this agent with him, this little yes man because this is before he becomes the, you know. Yeah, before yeah, before he actually becomes, but you he's know, not an, Eggman. it's not a yeah, but it's not really an homage to Snively. I think it's just more, know, that, it's more like just to showing the downfall of. Right. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're probably right. That's probably where they, they went with it. It was just, I, I was just sitting here and I'm just watching because it's like, again, like, you know, you have this like, like, you know, kind of me quibbling little yes, man. He would try to get his piece in, but then, you know, Robotnik would just completely talk over him, talk down to him, and he would just sit there and take it. And I'm just sitting here. I'm like, this I'm getting Snively vibes from here. I mean, yes, they're not the same character. I mean, like even Snively had his limits. I mean, by the end of Sonic Sad AM, I mean, he pretty much said, you know what, fuck this shit, I'm out. But you know, so I mean, yes, they're, they're not exactly the same. But that's why I was just kind of wondering. It's like with all these weird little homages and Easter eggs and such. That's why I was just wondering. I was like, I don't know, is it possible? That you know, they maybe try, maybe like you know, let's channel a little bit of an homage, give him a quibbling little yes man, kind of like what they did with Sad AM. I would say that's more like, I would say if you're thinking about it like that, yeah, but it wouldn't be like, it's not totally not like Snively, though. I will say, <laughs> though, I will yeah, say, well, and, and I'm sorry, <laughs> everybody needs to shut up about the fact that they think. Eggman and Agent Stone had fucking sexual tension. Get out of here. Jesus. 
Oh, for God's sake. No, literally because of the one part, right, where he gets mad. He's like, pin yourself against the wall. <laughs> that is, uh, that's some kinky BDSM right there. I'm like, I'm thinking of myself. I remember watching that part. And I cried because I was like, "How fucking alpha pin, are you?" Stone, pin yourself against the wall <laughs> to now tell another. Now give me a kiss. <laughs> to tell another man, pin yourself against the wall, and he just gets right in front of his face just to point out how stupid he is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> also, <laughs> also one of my favorite lines, right? Is when he goes to Tom's house after Sonic got found out. And he's being he's hiding. My favorite line is when he's talking to Tom. Tom sees right through his BS and he just starts talking about how intelligent he is. And one of the best lines was when I was a baby, I was I was spitting out formulas at an early age while you were spitting up formula. I was like <laughs> oh, um, I, well, sat there actually, going, uh, I was breastfed actually. Nice. <laughs> Throw that into my <laughs> open face, why don't you? <laughs> that was beautiful. I was like, oh, God, and let alone a little, a throwaway comedic line like that. It's like, it, it explains so much about Robotnik. Like, yeah, it's like Robotnik the orphan. So he's like, yeah, he's, he, yeah, Robotnik the orphan becomes this like ego, egotistical megalomaniac, freaking megalomaniac. And it's like, also that the world can look at him. So it's like, it's like it's amazing how you can like you know just like infer all of this from one throwaway comedy line. Oh my goodness, yes! It's like, yeah, Jim Carrey as a whole is just freaking beautiful. Yes, it's so good. Yeah. So then, pretty much like yeah, like pretty much like from there, it's like yeah, so yeah, Sonic like yeah, Sonic ends up like uh. He ends up like sneaking into Tom's house. You know, he gets tranked in the leg. That was when Robotnik showed up. They had that little exchange. They, you know, Tom and Sonic freaking bail, and they're like, you know, okay, we we gotta get to San Francisco because Sonic lost his rings. He tried to, he you know, he tried to go, you know, oh, I've been found. I gotta go somewhere. But then, like, you know, from like, you know, a little bumbling mishap, his rings end up getting sent. Through you know through a through a portal, and landing on like like a tower or something in San Francisco. I forgot what the tower was, but yeah, yeah they yeah it land it landed on a tower. So it's like okay, here's where the uh the you know buddy road trip motif came in because it's like okay, we gotta go we gotta go to San Francisco and get Sonic his rings back. All the while, Robotnik is chasing their asses. Yes. <laughs> Oh man, this this actually leads to like um another scene that I actually I mean I got an early glimpse of it like from a uh, from a, what was it the YouTube channel uh, movie clips because they actually yeah. did like upload this one clip on the YouTube and I wanted to see it just for curiosity's sake and be like okay well just with this one clip how exactly did, were they able to pull how did they actually be able to pull this off with all the changes and fixes that they done with with Sonic in general and this led to probably one of my uh, other like favorite scenes in the entire movie where um as they're driving away as as Tom and Sonic are driving away from Tom's house or whatever uh tr you know to, to escape Robotnik and such Sonic tries to explain to Tom like why he needs to get his rings what he's going to do once he gets the rings like why this is happening in general and Tom was like okay nope that's it I'm pulling over this is where you go out you go Sonic is like, but I gotta get to San Francisco. And it's like, no, it just go west. It's a straight shot. You can't miss it. It's like, okay, that's great. Now I don't feel bad saying bye to you now. He sends him off. And Sonic comes back with a fish on his head. Yeah, he's <laughs> wet, covered in seaweed. And it's like, it was like one of the, it's like, oh man. Okay, 
seeing the clip by itself before actually seeing the movie, I didn't exactly get the entire context of the scene. So I see Tom, you know, show like um sh like uh, emoting his lines or whatever. I thought it's like, oh no, okay, I I was afraid of this. Of course, they bring this guy to play this character. He's not even trying to emote or anything. Oh my god, this is god awful. Here we are. Here while we here we are. We have Sonic, you know, just sounding glorious or whatever. But now. But then, when I get the context of that scene in particular, it's like, I get it. I get why Tom is, like, acting so sarcastic. He's, he's, he's really sounding sarcastic and shit when Sonic is being like, Well, so, as I was crashing into the cold, dark waters of the Pacific, I learned a few things. A, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. B, salt water stings. And C... I didn't want to be entirely on this planet, but I am. Why? Because you shot me. Okay, yeah, I, I get it. You shot me! Okay, I get it. You <laughs> said it once before, you. Oh, you didn't have to keep rubbing it in at all. Good grief. I am. <laughs> it was like, it's like, yeah, the way that Tom acts so sarcastic about everything, it's like, okay, I get it. I get why he's acting like this, and the scene turned out so much better. And the, and on top, I am wet. I, I am wet. wet. I am cold. cold. There's a fish on my head. On my head. <laughs> and clearly, I can't do this on my own. And then just the fish just casually falls off his head. Yeah, yeah, really. It's like that scene alone with like with Tom being a sarcastic, a sarcastic dick towards Sonic, and and <laughs> Ben Schwartz like do like that was probably one of the best voice performances Ben Schwartz has ever done with Sonic like at all like throughout his entire movie. It's like seriously with that in in general. It's like oh my god, this scene is just. I mean, as I mean, yeah, it did seem a little bit rushed or, or whatever. I get that. But it it was still handled so well, like performance wise, it was great. Uh, but and yeah, then uh, they become fugitives and go on a road trip because it is all Tom's fault. Yeah, yeah. Even though, yeah, even though it was obviously Sonic's fault because freaking he was the one that lost his cool on the baseball diamond and you know caused that um uh ca caused that shockwave to lose to make green hills lose power okay i never i never i honestly never got that like with that with that scene as well as like it was great performance wise but with the direction they were taking with with all the dialogue and such it's like okay I don't get this. Why? How exactly is this Tom's fault? Because he shot. Because he tranquilized him. Um, I mean, okay. I mean, okay. Yes, his sonic. Like his. Yeah. I mean, his sonic rings were lost because you know Tom tranquilized him or whatever. But it's like, okay, how is this entirely Tom's fault? If anything, none of this would have been happening if you if he didn't lose his cool at the baseball diamond. I mean, if he were to keep his cool and didn't. Didn't entirely like have his um, emotions dwell on the fact that he's so lonely. None of this would have been happening from the beginning. So it's like, so it's like Tom says, "Okay, I guess it is partially my fault that this is happening." And it's like, you know what? No, I agree with Tom on this. Tom, it's it it is technically p partially Tom's fault in this case. It's not entirely his fault. He didn't cause the shockwave. That was that was Sonic's fault. B but it's yeah, because but of Tom. He had a fish on his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like it's like dude, Tom did you a fucking favor, Sonic, or else you would have ended up in the mushroom world that you hate so much. <laughs> Seriously, or worse. Several times. Several times throughout this movie, you know, he keeps talking about how he needs to, you know, for like his next, the next place he should escape to is just what is called the mushroom planet. And he makes it very clear how much he hates mushrooms. Now, the obvious reference here is probably, what is it, like a mushroom hill zone from Sonic yeah. 3? That, that's the obvious. Mushroom hill zone. Yeah, that's the obvious reference. But then you know the people who have never played Sonic 3. They immediately take this as, oh my god, he's ripping on Mario. Which, you know, you know what? I'll take that too. Because, you know, up at least until, like, what, the past decade or something? Like, yeah, Sonic and Mario have rivals. So, you know what? Yeah, take that subtle dig. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw it as both. And it and I it was glorious. I, I love how it's like, I, I wow, two pot wow, two pot shots in one joke. <laughs> That's impressive. Uh uh all right, but um in any which case so so yeah, Tom 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 agrees to uh, help Sonic in uh, reaching San Francisco in order for Sonic to get his rings, and they inev and they eventually they stop at a gas station, which just so happens to be near this bar. I for I completely forgot the name of the bar, but oh man, to me this is probably another one of the uh, one of the other highlights of the movie where. Tom is trying to get a hold of his buddy Wade at the police station in Green Hills. And Sonic is trying so he tries so hard not to give in to just how crazy and so much fun uh, the bar the bar is next to the gas station. And ultimately he <laughs> gives the... in he gives in and disguises himself just to get into the bar. One of the best parts, right, is he's literally just got his face against the window and he's like fogging it up because he's like <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> He fogs up the window and he just like, and then just to continue looking at all the action from the window, he immediately like rubs off the fog and continues looking. It's like, oh my god, this poor boy. <laughs> He's like, I'm okay, I'm okay. I don't, I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> Ex exactly. I need it. <laughs> it's like I need. Oh, I need this, and I need this really fast. Oh, yeah, man. and then it's like, and then like, you know, yeah, because like the bar scene, I have to admit, it's like, yeah, the bar scene it was for me was like, you know, probably my favorite segment of the movie, just because like, you know, it was cute, it was funny. You, they dug, they did the whole concept thing about you know Sm Sonic making a bucket list, even though he doesn't really quite understand, you know, what the term bucket list means. But he's like, you know what, I don't care. I'm gonna write down all the things I want to do before I leave Earth, and it's like some of the most like mundane shit that he can possibly think of but it's like yeah he makes this little list which is like all kinds of cute and adorable and then you know one thing leads to another and it leads to a bar fight which is like the first time that we see this actually like they start doing this whole thing where it's like sonic is moving so fast that it's like pretty much like the world around him is like you know it's like he's gone zawaro you know everything stops and you see sonic just running around casually throwing things tying people up doing like all these kinds of shenanigans literally for like two or three minutes and then like as soon as time starts and it's like, like it's giving the impression that yeah sonic is just moving so fast that he practically wipes this bar out by himself <laughs> he, he, hey, he fox, really hey fox hey uh fox called they're gonna sue you for taking so for taking quick silver stuff and x-ray <laughs> Oh no! And then here comes DreamWorks saying, "Hey, we did it first with Over the Hedge." <laughs> oh my god! You're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's right. Oh, it's, it's just a bunch of companies not having to pay each other for who came up with the idea first. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it's like, you know, you think like, okay, this is going to be like some crazy cracktastic action scene or something where like both Sonic and Tom have to team up to go up against a couple of bar brawlers. It's like, no, no, Tom is fucking useless in this fight. Sonic takes care of the entire bar by himself. Oh, well, well I mean, to Tom's credit, he, he, like, he, he was able to punch a few guys pretty good. Granted, it's not, it not nowhere, like it was granted, it near as impressive as what Sonic did, but it's like, no, he still got, he still led a hand. <laughs> it's like, yeah, Sonic, Sonic pretty much did, did, he did the work by himself. Yeah. I think mean, that's pretty much what it was. Like, Sonic took out the entire bar, like the brawlers, the bartenders, you know, the waitresses. He took out everybody. And he, yeah, put, a, yeah, he, and he took, put a bear head on one of them. Yeah, he, yeah, he took a, he took a, he put a bit, he put like a, a bear head like on the guy who initially attempted, pretty much started the fight, and he's saying, "We don't like your kind around here." Oh yeah, what and what kind is that? Hipsters. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I was not, ex I was not expecting that response, but later on during the movie, it's like, okay, I think I can see why this guy assumed Sonic was a hipster. So it's like, oh, okay, that's that's, that, that's hilarious. 
<laughs> but <laughs> but yes, but yeah, Sonic. But yeah, Sonic. Like he takes out the entire bar. He takes a selfie with the guy. He was about to fall on the floor. Sonic actually, apparently, in, they apparently they use that as an excuse to uh, 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 fill in on people. It's like, okay, how exactly did Sonic like chili dogs? Well, um, take a look at this. Um, in the bar scene, he as the waitress is spilling all of his this uh, person's food is like he just garves down like all of these chili dogs at the speed of sound. <laughs> so, so I was like, "There's that." Oh man, it it overall it was it. Oh man, it it was it was a it was a fun scene. It it really was. Yeah, like to me, that's the highlight of the Sonic movie. It's just this this whole bar fight and everything. It's like that that was great. <laughs> oh oh yes, absolutely. Uh, but now it's like I'm trying to think of like um exact like um I think after the bar scene I think that's when we uh, initially like um it's the next day and uh oh no wait oh no okay no I think at that point that's when we stop at like a motel or a hotel or something like that. All right. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what happened. Yeah, so I th like yeah, like they stop up. They, yeah, yeah, they go to a motel for a night and then like Sonic just literally crashes. Yeah. I do like, love though how one of the things on Sonic's bucket list was to start a bar fight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that 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 is also true. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So they're at the motel. You know, Tom. I think is seeing like on the news that you know that you know he's like a wanted fugitive, mm -hmm. and it's like you, you know it's like so it's like pretty much like in between like the segments with uh, Tom and Sonic. You're also getting segments of Robotnik and uh, Robotnik and the agent, you know, just, you know, either uncovering something or tracking them down. Like, you kind of have, like, this back and forth going on, you know, between the two of them, like, you know, throughout a, like, a, what would you say, half the movie? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would say more or less. Probably, like, two-thirds, maybe? Something like, something like that. And it's like, until they ultimately wind up in San Francisco. Oh, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, it's like, um, uh, 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 like, uh, yeah, like, incidentally, um, at one point is like, um, Dr. Robotnik, like, runs into, like, uh, one of the, um, cause, um, he, he runs into, like, um, the, uh, one of Sonic's quills that still had, like, a, like, a bunch of, like, uh, Sonic's energy in it, because keep in mind, um, when Dr. Robotnik initially, uh, visited Tom's house, um, Robotnik stumbled across um the quill sitting on Tom's table, or not? And I guess and, he, and I guess he kept it with them to to uh uncover the source of his power, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. And um, I I think that at that point that's when he initially um tries to use um that quill or whatnot. I I think I think that's when he initial that's that ties into like a, the chase scene that occurs with uh, Sonic and Tom. Yeah, like, yeah, he's, like, he's starting to figure out, like, you know, the whole quill with, you know, giving his robots, like, you know, supersonic speed and energy, you know, he's starting to tap into it. Yeah, which, yeah. I mean, I I do want to say this, though, because, like, I did see, uh, after I saw the movie, I saw that Some Call Me Johnny posted a video on this, and I do somewhat kind of have to agree with him on this. I feel like Robotnik, like, the minute he found that quill, I think, like, he would have, like, Realistically, he would have immediately done research on the thing, like right then and there. Like, yeah. I don't think he'd wait until now to actually do it. Yeah. Even I'm like that way, but I will say the best, one of the best moments I saw that I thought was great is when he's analyzing it. He just has his moment, puts on that playlist. And he's just. Uh... <laughs> yeah, we actually have a little Robotnik dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, th yeah. I think yeah. This happened like sometime after the uh, the chase scene. Uh yeah. That, that's that's what I have like after the chase scene, whatever. But yes, like yeah, like Doctor Robotnik. You know, he's just dancing to his playlist or whatever. And just and just when he was getting into his groove, you know, like whipping out the holograms of him skiing and his head getting chopped off by a T Rex. Which, by the way, um, the little dance that he did with his has suppo supposedly with his head cut off. That was actually like um. Something Jim Carrey did as like a throwback to the Vin De to the Van Dyke show. Yep. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, he uh he uh announced that during like a recent uh, Conan O'Brien interview. So I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. But yeah, but yeah, Doctor Robotic is like just having the time of his life. And out of the out of the freaking blue, Agent Stone is just right behind him, like like shaking to the groove or whatever. <laughs> and that's when we get to the uh, scene that was shown in the second trailer, where she, <laughs> where Doctor Stone is like, I thought you would like a uh, latte with uh, steamed Austrian goat milk. What of course I, I like. like what do I look like an imbecile to you? Of course I want one of your lattes. I love the way you make them. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that is the most aggressive compliment I've ever. Heard. It's so good. <laughs> it's like it's, like it's funny. I've seen the trailer God knows how many times, and that's still the funniest part. <laughs> it, it, and, it, you it know, really like is. I love your lattes. I like the way you make them. And, I love the know, way you Asian. make them. <laughs> And you know, Agent Stone, get used to that. It's probably the only compliment you're ever going to get from throughout the entire movie. <laughs> Too bad we don't see anything of Agent Stone after this. Yeah, he just, right. just kind of disappears. Well, all right, you know what, Doctor? All right, well, all right, well. To be fair, Agent Stone had more screen time than any of the military. I'm, ah. I'm, just, I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> that that's actually true. Yeah, which, which, yeah, it's like, yeah, going back a little bit, I mean, it's like, yeah, here we are, like, um, they're sh kind of, sh and, oh, man, this is something I kind of worried about, like, when they showed out the first trailer or whatever, it's like, they, they hinted, like, okay, oh, the military's gonna be involved, yet throughout the entire, like, throughout pretty much the majority of the movie, like, 95% of the movie, like, the military is hardly even involved, so, I mean, it's like, what was the point of having the military being involved to begin with? Like, just leave it at, okay, we'll call Dr. Robotnik to have him, you know, try to capture this uh, creature or whatever. Don't even bother bringing in the troops or anything. <laughs> there's there's really no point. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, yeah, uh, but, yes, it's like, um, yeah, it's like, sometime later during the film, we have Dr. Eggman having the time of his life, you know, trying to analyze the power from just this one sonic quill. A little bit after that, we have the uh, the chase scene where Dr. Robotnik is, like, throwing out, like, these tanks and these other robots to, to try to capture Sonic and Tom. Also, so, also, this is the first instance we see Sonic flossing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, everyone, it's like, yeah, seriously, everyone's, like, losing their shit over this scene. It's like... Yeah, to me, it's just like, yeah, okay, whatever. But everybody's, like, losing their mind over, oh, my God, Sonic is flossing. That's, like, fucking heresy or something. I'm just like, who cares? Are, are, you, are you kidding? I see Sonic flossing. I'm flipping my shit, but for all the right reasons. It's like, <laughs> it, that, this, it's like, this is another huge surprise that I was not expecting. I was expecting to see the exact same animation that they showed off in the second trailer when it, when Tom asked Sonic, uh, how are you not dead? And Sonic is like, I have no idea. <laughs> how, how did this dance make it in a movie? I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, it's like they replaced that with Sonic flossing, and while that was a complete total surprise, and in other scenarios, it's like, oh my god, did they seriously pull off this in, for this particular movie? I can't believe this. But no, it's like, <laughs> I was like, you know what? Sonic would do something like this. <laughs> I mean, it's no wonder why that guy from the bar referred to Sonic as a hipster, because he would do something <laughs> like this. <laughs> And so we see him dancing at, after he defeat the tank. It's like, a ta Sonic 1, a tank 0. I'm sorry. I'm just like, oh, my God. I could not help but have, like, the biggest grin on my face. <laughs> Is that all you got? That. Is that all you got? No, but thank you for asking. It's like, no, but thank you for asking. <laughs> it's like, uh-oh. Uh -oh. That's a Jim Carrey thing to do. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, all of this happens. And, yes, eventually... Tom and Sonic finally make it to San Francisco. Now, but. I just want I just want to say cuz um I know like Danny, I know you and I we briefly talked about this like way before we even started recording this and how some parts of the movie felt like it felt rushed or whatnot. This to this me is... is one of those moments cuz it's like I I mean 
I, I'm mad at myself for not, you know, doing some research ahead of time and um, actually trying to, like, Google Maps or some shit like that. I'm like, okay, exactly. How long did it take for someone to get from Green Hills, Montana, or or just Montana in general, to San Francisco? Because the amount of time it took for them to get to Green Hills, Montana, to San Francisco, and the time they spent before and after throughout this movie, it, okay, I felt like, all right, it, it could not have... It could not have taken that very little time to get there. I'm sorry. Something's off. Here. It's like, yeah, to me, as much as I, you know, don't get me wrong, guys. I really did enjoy the Sonic movie. But if there is one criticism, I can give it. And it's like, yeah, the pacing at some points feels really rushed. Like, it's like, uh, uh, you know, whether it's like, you know, they, they're they rushing through things. You know, we got to get from this point to this point. Let's just fucking rush through it. And... You know, it kind of does, you know, hamper some scenes a little bit. Like, you know, it's like, you know, I know, like, there's a point where, you know, where Tom and Sonic, they're just, like, in the car, and Tom mentions about how, you know, he actually wanted to move. He's actually planning on moving to San Francisco because he's tired of, you know, Green Hills being so boring. And Sonic took, like, such great offense to it. And I think that's where it's like, I got where they're going with it. But at the same time, it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, I think because literally, like, we, we weren't in Green Hills for very long. And it's like, literally from, like, when they, they, you know, they were getting chased out of the house to the bar took, like, five minutes. So that's like, within, like, it felt like within five minutes, it's like, okay, you know, they, we went from, okay, who the hell are you to, okay, let's go to San Francisco, and okay, now we're going into a bar now. And it's like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute, guys. You know, can we at least give us a couple of minutes to breathe or a couple of minutes to kind of maybe, you know, develop things just a little bit more? Like, yeah, there, I don't know if you guys felt the same way, but there were just some parts that, to me, felt like a little bit rushed, like the pacing was a little bit off. Like, I know the movie had a very very weird like a uh, development cycle and such like you know horrible model not included i mean it's pretty much well known that they, there were problems trying to develop this movie and maybe that's a result of it or something i don't know but it's like you know to me that's like the one th that was probably the biggest criticism i can have with it is like yeah the pacing seems really off at certain parts of the movie and it's like if you just maybe gave a couple more minutes, like maybe if this movie was like an extra five, ten minutes long, we could have had a little bit more breathing room to develop certain parts or develop some more dialogue or something to kind of help things flow a little bit better. It's like, that, that's all. I, I don't know if I'd say that so much about the bar scene at the very least, because, you know, it's like, yeah, they they drive up they drive up to like the gas station, they see a payphone, and then, yeah, Tom is like, okay... I'm going to need you to stay here. I need to clarify a couple of things. I'll be back with you real quick. And then, you know, Sonic looking at the bar from across the street, he's getting very impatient because of all the cool things that are happening, decides to rush in there and start put, making himself a part of that. And then that's when Tom has to get involved there. And then, you know, yeah, that's when they start having like their buddy buddy scenes and whatnot. So I don't know if I'd say that so much about, say, the bar scene itself. But yeah, I think I would have liked maybe a couple more instances of like maybe Sonic and Tom together or like you know or even like way back earlier in the movie like maybe a bit more with uh Longclaw or something yeah yeah like, or, the, or at the yeah, very just, least yeah, just, like maybe a little bit more time with um Sonic and Dr. Robotnik because that's probably like one like, of the biggest things that a lot of people were wanting to see more of it's like interaction between Sonic and Dr. Robotnik just like how it was in the games uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And, and to and to be honest, yeah, it's like yeah, so, it's like yeah, Sonic and Robotnik met back in the house, but they really don't have like any kind of like you know one on one banter or anything until the end of the movie. Like you know, Robotnik was talking more so to Tom than Sonic. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you know, I get I, I get I you know that's just kind of the takeaway that I took from it and stuff. It's like you know. It's a very, I admit it's a very minor thing, but it's just anybody who has watched that last season of Game of Thrones can fucking tell you the pacing in that last season did not help anything. Uh, yeah, I'll just take your word for it on that one. <laughs>
Like, like, don't get me wrong. There are all kinds of things wrong with that last season of Game of Thrones. But yeah, the fact that like you are trying to do, you're trying to cram in so much shit and get us from like point A to point B in such a short amount of time that it's like you know, and it contributed to everybody just going, okay, what the fuck are you doing now? You know, that's where it's like you know, G- Game of Thrones. That last season of Game of Thrones is a really big example of like how pacing can help. Like utterly shit the bed on your narrative. Like, fortunately, Sonic is not that bad. I was like, you know, they, yeah, no, Sonic is far from you know that level of bad when it comes to pacing. But yeah, just the point I'm trying to make here is that it's like you know, if they gave us a little bit more time to flesh things out a little bit, I think it would have you know the narrative could have flowed a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, my my thoughts exactly. Like, yeah, just just give the movie a little bit more time to flesh some other parts of the movie out, and the pacing probably would have had like quite the amount of improvements. Uh but yeah, it's just like yeah, after all of that, after the uh, the the big chase scene with uh, Doctor Robotic trying to ch- get trying to take out uh, Sonic and Tom, Sonic gets injured. And then shortly after, they make it to San Francisco, and they may and they arrive at on the apartment. Uh, no, 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 the apartment. Oh, no, no. They make they make they make it to a uh, Maddie to a uh, Maddie's uh sister sister's house. Um, Who's a bitch? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maddie's yeah. We see Maddie's sister who um, <laughs> and like I will say like as a character like freaking. Maddie's sister is more or less like just as useless of a character as the military. All right, I- I'm just saying. All she ever does is just like make make comments about us. Like it's like Maddie, you need to leave this man because blah blah blah. And that's that's literally 99 percent of her character or whatever. So- yeah, it it, it, con- it contributed virtually nothing. It contributed nothing to the story. It certainly contributed nothing to Tom and Maddie. Like, there was never really any kind of friction or anything going on between the two of them that would warrant that dialogue in the first place. I mean, Maddie has been nothing but supportive of Tom when he made his decision, like, you know, okay, I've been accepted to, like, you know, the uh, San Francisco PD or whatever, and he's like... You know, yeah, I've been accepted. She's been nothing but supportive. So it's she like, got two separate could... cakes depending on what happened. Yeah, really? Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, you literally, I mean, it's like, you know, you literally could have just had her, like, you literally could have just maybe taken this scene where it's like, you know, maybe, like, instead of, like, at her sis- at her bitch sister's house, maybe have her at, like, there- she's at a hotel or something. It's like, and barely anything would change. The one thing that would change is you'd have to find a new way to give Sonic his shoes. But that's about it. And even Everything then, it wasn't, even, it wasn't that, even that wasn't even the the sister who gave him the shoes. It was the niece, right? So I mean, it's like you know, you can find some other way. First, to give Sonic his iconic shoes, but everything else in that scene from her examining him and you know, actually like you know, seeing seeing Sonic and everything, like nothing would change if you just completely took out the bitch sister. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, pretty much. I I have human sal- smelling salts that I can use from my human first aid kit. <laughs> I'd like to point out. I'd like to point out. Can we just uh, talk about the fact that I was like completely calm throughout that whole thing? You know, did not freak out at all. It's like, yeah, yeah, no, you were great. Okay. That being said, what is going on? Then? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, okay, all right. Seriously, I don't care what anyone says about Maddie as a character. Maddie as a character. She she was actually done more well than people seem to realize. All right, that that's just how I see it. It's like yeah, she she's a support she's supportive of Tom, and it's like she like her personality as a character. It's like it, it's it's just great. Uh, it's just re- it's just it's just because of that. I, I it's just really disappointing that we don't see more of Maddie. You know, throughout the whole without the majority of the movie or whatever. Yeah. If, it's like I can only imagine like how the whole adventure would have been like if Maddie was around more. Or yeah, or... yeah, like yeah, like Maddie's in like the first ten minutes of the movie, and then you know she's she's there when they get to San Francisco. But it's like yeah, the grand majority of the movie she is virtually absent. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's like, yeah, Maddie recovers Sonic after the incident at the, at the chase scene. So, like, like the knees give Sonic his, his iconic shoes. Um, we get, we get the adorable scene of Sonic meeting, like, uh, Tom's best friend that he won't shut up about. His dog, his dog <laughs> well, I don't Ozzie. see the appeal. <laughs> I don't see the appeal. That is very gross. <laughs> oh, that, that was also a very wholesome scene, yes. And that's when they, and that's when we finally decide to take action and uh, go to the building, um, to retrieve Sonic's rings. But all, but all before, all before, you know, um, tying up uh, Maddie's big sister and be like, wait, should we worry about? Wait, sh- maybe, do you think we? Do you think maybe we should take uh, your sister's car? No, yeah, yeah, it's like, fine. yeah, I think she'll be fine. <laughs> this is my house. <laughs> God. So 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 yeah so, so yeah. Yeah, it's like I think like I think like even like later on like towards the end of the movie like you see like the daughter she's just running around like the house she's going gotta go fast gotta go fast she's just running and it's like the one funny line that I I know I just complained about the sister but I will give her credit the one funny line she goes she's like you know still tied to the chair and she goes she yells at her daughter's like put on my Fitbit I need some I need some miles. <laughs> it's like I'm like that was funny. I'll give her that line. That was a funny line. I need to use the bathroom. Yeah, and it's like, and it's like I'm sure like at the end of the movie, it's like you're just thinking like, like, and you know, to this day they say she is still tied to that chair. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty much. She's pretty much tied up overnight or whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, but yes, after. But uh, but yes, after all of that, they finally make it to the to, to the top of the tower where the where the rings have uh, landed on. Honestly, thinking about it now, I don't recall exactly how they got the exact location of that tower. Cause cause cause. Uh, oh, man, well, I, I, Son- know. I know when Sonic wo- I know when Sonic woke up, he said something how like you know he remembered seeing his uh the rings fall on like this this uh this building that the same building that like i saw on your t-shirt and then like i'm sure tom considering that he was trying to uh considering tom was trying to get a part of that police department he probably knows the area a bit so he probably recognizes the building that was that was also really that's also a really good point that you bring up too on how like the tower is like i actually you know reference on tom's t-shirt you know while sonic was tranquilized as he like, as right. Sonic was slowly about to pass out, so that that's a that's a that's an actually a really good point there. Um, but yeah, ultimately they make it to the top of the tower, and oh man, that's when, that's when we um, then Sonic and Tom are about to say their final goodbyes, and all of that. It's like th- this is another case where it's like, you know. I know we saw a lot of Sonic and Tom throughout the movie, but because of how the movie was, the considering how the pacing of the movie was in its entirety, I pretty much got the exact same feel feeling that I did. You know, when I initially saw the beginning scene where where a long claw tells Sonic to go to the warp ring, keep on running, but Sonic ultimately turns back to try to help Longclaw. It's like, yeah, it got me in the feels a little bit, but it wasn't too impactful or anything. It's like, oh, that's sad, or what, or whatever, but it's like, oh, uh, I mean, it, it, it could have been a lot worse, I guess. It's like, all right. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, at the very least, at least they... Bring some attention to it. It's not like it's like, oh, hey, look, we're actually here. So, how did you know this place? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that is tr- that is true. They they did bring enough attention to it. So, I mean, there is that. But then, just when Sonic was about to throw one of his warp rings to get to Mushroom World, here comes Doctor Robotnik with his prototype airship powered by Sonic energetic quill and his egg shaped drones <laughs> yeah and the one and the one time to- and that's the first time that sonic actually refers to him as eggman yeah. 
Yeah, which the first time I saw the movie, I just figured, you know, Sonic was just referring to Dr. Robotnik as Dr. Eggman because, oh, oh yeah, that's right. He called he called him this name a lot in the games. Uh, let's just uh, let's just shoo this in. No rhyme or reason. Let's just shoo it in. But well, yeah. I, I wouldn't even so much say it shooed in because it's like, you know, Sonic's been giving everybody nicknames throughout the movie. So, like, they just they just subtly, like, threw that in there because, you know, like, yeah, of course Sonic would come up with a nickname for Dr. Robotnik. Well, well, yeah, right. I mean, that, well, I mean th that's exactly my point. I mean, it's like that was that's that's what I initially thought when I first I mean, what I just thought they shoot it in. For the sake of shooing it in, you know, for when I first saw the movie, upon seeing the movie a second time, it it occurred to me. It's like, well, I mean, to be fair, his these robots and he, a lot of his robots they were shaped like eggs and they're white like eggs. So it is a possibility that maybe they were using that as a reference for Sonic to you know make him call Sonic you know Eggman. I mean. I mean, it's nothing like in Sonic Adventure where he's like, "Oh, look, a shine, uh, look, a giant talking egg, or whatever." It's like that's. I, I mean, when you looking, seeing the movie a second time, I got the feeling. All right, well, it was rather subtle, but I think this is what how they're trying to uh, have Sonic. Uh, they were trying to give Sonic a reason to call Doctor Robotic Eggman, and it's like, you know what? Yeah, yeah, it it, wor it works. It actually well, works. Well, it's the only. It's it's the only way it can work because it's like, yeah, in the games, you know, Eggman, Robotnik, quite a he, portly fellow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he was literally shaped like really an egg. Have, yeah, we don't have that argument here in the movie. So it's like, okay, what's the next best thing? All of Robotnik's, you know, drones and everything, they're all egg-shaped. It's like, okay, that works. We'll take it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and then and then like yeah, pretty much this is where we then get to okay, now you're caught up to like the beginning of the movie where it's like, okay, so now you know what led us to here. What's gonna happen? Let's find out. It's and like, wow, now you gotta have I you wanna too. know what happens next? Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and like pretty much like yeah, it's like the last like five minutes of the movie is just this is just this you know chase battle scene with Sonic and Eggman. Like, finally, these two actually are, like, confronting each other. You know, took, took long enough, but they're finally freaking doing it. Uh, oh, yes. I, I yeah, was and like... it's like... Yeah, and it's like, it's like you're seeing, like, and in, let alone you're seeing Sonic, like, you know, he's making use of the warp rings, too. So it's not just, like, it starts in San Francisco, but then it's like, he throws the ring... I'm trying to remember where they all went and wound up. I think they went to Paris at one point. They went to Egypt at one point. He was on the Great Wall of China at one point. Like, yeah, he was like, they were literally bouncing all over the goddamn world. Yes. Uh, oh, uh, uh, yeah, it's like, um, so Sonic, Sonic, like, uh, kicked, like, a Tom and Maddie off of the building because, you know, that was his best way for... Because he was just basically trying to save their lives. A reckless way to do so, but, I mean, hey, he was trying to save their lives nonetheless. And, and yeah, he, the first warp ring that uh, Sonic threw, yeah, it was, like, it lead them, the two of them, back to Green Hills. You know, be, because it was somewhere safe or whatever. And, and yeah, and, yeah, you're right. It's like, yeah, they were... Yeah, Sonic was just warping to everywhere to hopefully try to lose Eggman. But in actuality, it's like, again, this airship is, is powered by Sonic's quill, like a powered up quill. So his, so his airship is more or less given the exact same speed as Sonic. So, yeah, there was no way Sonic was going to lose Eggman so easily. And ultimately, it did, it did lead Sonic and uh, Dr. Robotnik or Eggman, you know, back to Green Hills. To <laughs> But the poor mime, though that that guy is scarred for life. <laughs> oh yes. Oh <laughs> uh, oh yeah. So, yeah. They, but they were going through Paris. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it's like yeah, and it's like yeah, it's like they get to Green Hills, and it's like you know, it's like oh now the town finally unites for some reason to fight out to protect to protect the Blue Devil, yeah, and so it's you... like crazy. And Crazy Carl even comes out with a fucking chainsaw. <laughs> it's like, he is ready for blood. 
Well, I guess like they, they they decided to come together. It's like, hey, you're beating up our sheriff, man. You can't do that. <laughs> yeah, but it's like he comes out with his fucking chainsaw. And he's just like, it's like, oh, Carl, he wants blood. <laughs> like, my my cha- my chainsaw hungers. Yeah, and then of course we get the heartfelt moment of Tom pretty much saying that Sonic does belong here and that he is his friend and the power of friendship wakes him up. Wakes him up. It's like, oh, of course, you know, we gotta gotta have that kind of a wholesome ending. I mean, this is a kids' movie after all. It's yeah. like cheesy, cheesy as it is. <laughs> And then Sonic's just like, oh, by the way, uh, that that power you have in mind, yeet! Yeah, he, it's like, oh my god. He literally pulls off a freaking, like, nozzle unleashed bullshit. <laughs> and he, and with it, with his electric powers, as it were, thanks to the power of friendship or whatever the hell, he literally is like, you, Eggman, I think you have something that belongs to me. And he literally absorbs all of the electric energy from that powered-up quill in Eggman's flying airship, and he makes it his own again. It's like, okay, all right, I know they, I know Paramount has done a lot of stuff that actually stays true to the Sonic canon, but it's like, I don't recall Sonic ever doing this bullshit. <laughs> what the hell did this happen? <laughs> you don't have you don't have enough badges to train me, Eggman. <laughs> I, I, yep, and then they, it pulls off the final showdown between Eggman and Sonic. A- and Sonic ba- essentially just wrecks Eggman. Like, he is wholly attacking Eggman's uh, airship at Sonic speed. And it's, and oh man, it's like, and th- at this point, it's like, okay, they show the, the scene where, um, in San Francisco, where, uh, th- where Eggman is firing off all of these missiles at Sonic at the very tip top of the tower. And Sonic is just having the time of his life. Life, you know, while time is pretty much stopped or just going really, really slow. That was one thing. But then we get to this scene where Son- where Sonic is like just going like going all nuts on Dr. Eggman with with his newly acquired speed and electric powers and stuff. It's like, yeah, okay, this is another moment in the movie where the VFX team really like they really went all out with the visual effects and it was so cool to see. You, you can can we talk about that awesome shot that they had where Eggman's like putting the glasses on and then in the reflection you see Sonic just glaring at him. Yes. That was fucking awesome. That that mm-hmm. was really awesome. That was a was beautiful so shot. It, it really was. Oh, yeah, and then and then Tom and then Tom, you know, it's like Sonic gives Tom the cue to throw a warp ring, and which ironically leads to the Mushroom World. And Sonic does one massive homing attack as Eggman is char- like Eggman and Sonic they're charging at each other, but Sonic ultimately triumph and go- triumphs over Eggman, and we and yeah we go we get into another beautiful shot with the visual effects where it's like in slow motion we see all of the glass like slowly break at- off of the top of Eggman's airship as he as he's just about to be flung into the warp ring and into the mushroom world. <laughs> Who would win in a fight? Big giant flying aerial aircraft with lasers or one tiny blue boy? Oh, that's obvious. That's a tiny blue boy. Yeah. Oh, and, and also- give me a big fat break! <laughs> and look, I, I also want to make mention to the one great line where Jim Carrey's just like, who the hell do you think you are? And then Tom's just like, I'm the donut lord, you son of a... <laughs> <laughs> hey, watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, so, yeah, so... Yeah, and then, so this pretty much brings us to the end of the movie. Like, we get this, like really wholesome scene where it's like you know yeah sonic's been accepted in the green hills but now sonic has his own room like they literally found his man cave out in the middle of the fucking woods and brought everything to tom's attic and just gave sonic his own room 
It was like, it was like, oh, it's like that was sweet. Like, oh, yeah, nice. it was a really, great, that was a really awesome way to end that off because like, they effectively just adopted Sonic. They, they really they did. did. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like, yes, my son's a hero. Yeah, I, and I'm just sitting here, I'm like, but I want to adopt Sonic. Well, by it's the like, way, yeah, uh, so we hear. Like, a, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say like. Cause like we get like that really cute scene, and then we see uh, we see Robotnik in the Mushroom World, complete with the mustache and shit. So it's like, okay, he's rocking the mustache, which is good. And again, I don't know, is it just me? But like, did Jim Carrey was he channeling his inner Mike Pollock? I was yes. just going to say that he he he, like, he, yeah, he legitimately like, was. Yeah, because it's like, yeah, he was not doing that, you know, he was not doing the charismatic, smooth, obnoxious talk or anything like he was doing throughout the movie. He was actually, he had the gruffness to him, like what we see Mike Pollock do. And it's like, oh my God, he's actually channeling Mike Pollock right now. This is amazing. And, and, <laughs> and, it, and it works out so well in this case, because it's like when we see uh, uh, Eggman, you know, in the mushroom world, like after all this time or whatever, it's like he looks at his watch and it reads day 87. And then he and then at points. Yeah, he channels his inner Mike Pollock It's like, come on, it's a joke. Laugh it up. <laughs> And, and and you know it's great great to see you know Doctor Stone came, uh, Agent Stone came back. Yeah yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah it's like totally not Spalding or anything you know. Yeah. But yeah like his one line where he's like a regular man would have been driven mad trying to find his way back home. I'll be back before Christmas. <laughs> it's, it's like the fact the fact that he's been in the mushroom world for like 87 days and it, in reality he is losing his sanity it's like it works so well that he literally like tries to it, channel his inner mike pollock at certain points it's like oh my god this works out so great i it, love it although i'm just sitting here and i'm like you know that's a rather specific date you guys are sitting at a, is that when the sequel's coming out yeah i was about <laughs> I was about to say, it's like, all right, if you guys are playing yeah, for a yeah, sequel, the... that's an oddly specific freaking date to say. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, but but suffice it to say, I mean, yeah, this movie definitely like left off like on a cliffhanger for a potential sequel. And considering the amount of money that Sonic is raking in right now, I would like to say that yeah, this pretty much has guaranteed a sequel at this point. Actually, if we can talk about that though, because like, yeah, that cliffhanger that we're left on, hey. Tails is here. Breaking yes. Tails. Oh, oh, oh my God! I was I was trying to contain myself because yeah, Tails is my favorite character. So I was like, I was not expecting Tails to show up like at the mid credits. So like, as soon as I saw him, like yeah, we see Warpring. He's coming out from what I'm assuming is you know Sonic's original world. He comes out and he's saying like he he throws a line or something saying like you know okay you know he's around here somewhere, and like yeah we see him doing his little propeller tails and literally flies off. So I'm like holy shit! It's like yeah they are definitely trying to play off a sequel and honestly I am all for it. I am honestly I am hoping that they actually pull some strings and actually pull off a sequel. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so like, it's like, please, like, like I, I get we can't get the same effect studio because they're kind of gone, but please, like, find, yo, don't just throw this sequel to anybody. Find something that's someone just as good as these last guys. Yeah. Oh, yes. But, but it's like, no, seriously. The f But, like, seriously, it's like, that was probably like, yeah, it's like, okay. There are, like, many surprises that I was not expecting throughout this movie. But, no, seriously. I think it's safe to say that was the biggest surprise throughout the entire movie. I was just... I didn't even realize that there was going to be an end credit scene. I was just admiring, like, the, like the first uh, credit sequence with... They were where they were utilizing like the revamped uh, Sonic sprites, you know, with you know that Sonic, was fun. You know, yeah, that 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 was nice. I I really like that where they show off like yeah. like the revamped uh, Sonic sprites, you know, reenacting certain parts of the movie and custom sprites of Jim Carrey, Doctor Robotnik. That was all. That was also actually really cool to see. And even listening to the song "Speed Me Up," which is a very, which by the way is a very underrated song. I'm just saying, it's so good. 
but I was not expecting this to happen. This is the biggest surprise out of all of them, where we show freak, where they show freaking tales of all people in the world. They showed off anime and echidnas, and now they showed off one animated twin-tailed fox. It's, it's like, well, okay, it's as if they're, you no, know, they are seriously trying to play off a sequel here, and I am stoked about it. I'm actually stoked about it. I mean, I just stayed at the end of it because I'm like, you know, Marvel's trained me to stay after the credits just in case there's another scene. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right, you know what? Head. You know what? A like a part of me was thinking the exact same thing. Like I wasn't fully on board with the idea entirely, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, no. If I've learned anything from watching like all of these Marvel movies, there's always like a credits scene at the very end. Thankfully, it wasn't at the very end, but it was like a quarter of the way through the credit sequence. But even so, I waited. I I was patient, and I was rewarded with this, and it was so great. Yeah. Yeah. Now that being said, that is like the only like added thing that they add in there. Cause it's like, cause yeah, Brian, it's like, yeah, I'm the same way. It's like Marvel movies have pretty much trained me now to stick around for credits. Cause a lot of people are putting stingers in there now. And it's like, you know, usually like in the middle and at the end, but the Sonic movie, they had the one stinger in the middle. They didn't have anything at the end. Yeah, I, I kind of had a feeling like they wouldn't add anything else. Like, once it cuts to, like, regular... Um, yeah, like, when, regular it, you know, when it cuts credits, to the scrolling text, that's when they, like, don't put anything there. Yeah. Right. I, mean, the one ex I mean, Marvel movies being the one exception to that. But, I mean, it's like, for the Sonic movie, I'm like, all right... They showed off this one massive last-minute surprise, you know, during, at, like, after the uh, Sonic uh, classic sprite... Um, credit sequence or whatever okay and now they're showing out their scrolling text it's like okay yeah i'm fairly certain there was they're they're gonna show nothing else after that yeah yeah but yeah overall it's like yep that was the sonic movie <laughs> Oh, yes, like, so many, so many great moments, I mean, yeah, again, the movie in general, like, of course it has its flaws or whatever, which, on, which was to be expected, even, like, even before the revamped uh, Sonic model, you know, before they made the changes to it, when we initially saw the first Sonic trailer, obviously, oh, no, even earlier than that, when we first saw the first animated Sonic movie poster, at, Everybody was thinking there was going to be some flaws with this movie in more ways than one. But ultimately, yeah, I, with the fixes that they made with the with Sonic model or whatever, amongst other things, I think it's safe to say that ultimately saved this movie. I mean, like what we said earlier, it's number one in the world right now, and it topped Detective Pikachu for 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 an opening weekend with a movie on a video game adaptation so it's like this no like yeah the, the decisions that paramount made you know in response to the criticisms that a lot of fans and a lot of other movie people or whatever they were dishing out there no i ultimately it did save this movie and i'm glad it did i'm actually really glad it did yeah, and like this movie is the the uh, physical definition of what you would refer to as a redemption arc <laughs> Yeah, really. It's like, talk about a complete freaking turnaround. It's like, I mean, it's, it's like I said before, like, I went into this movie with low expectations, even though I had heard, even though I was hearing, because I didn't see this, I didn't watch this movie until, uh, well, at the time of this recording, this past uh, Monday, you know, because that was the time, you know, because I was working all weekend, so I didn't have the time to go see this movie, because it was a Valentine's weekend, you know, that's a major holiday in the kitchen, so I didn't have the time until after it was done. But, you know, I went into, you know, I had heard a lot of people saying, oh, my God, this is amazing. And it's like, you know, people said the same thing about Detective Pikachu, too. And it's like, Detective Pikachu is, you know, I was like, I walked out of that. And it's like, that was cute. It's not this groundbreaking video game movie or something like what everyone's kind of making it out to be. But, yeah, it was cute. And I kind of went into this thinking, like, okay, if anything, it's probably going to be the same way. Like, is Sonic, like, the breakout freaking movie, like, everybody must see and stuff yeah not not really it's a lot better than what i thought it was gonna be like i like this a lot i like this more than detective pikachu yeah. like I, I just had i had way more fun 
watching this movie. You know, I think back to a lot of these things, like all throughout this discussion, and it's like just laughing, and it's just like, you know, yeah, it's like, you know, it doesn't have its flaws, sure. Does it have generic tropes? Sure. But given what we got and what they had to work with and what the hell happened, and yeah, man, this thing came out a lot better. It's better than it has any right to be. So it's like, yeah, by all means, guys, if you have not seen this, see this movie. Yeah, I and I can't stress enough. I love what they did with Sonic in this movie. Like as a kid, not even just the model, but as a character in general. Mainly because yes, I've I kind of had this. I've talked to like Jordan here and there about like my feelings on what they've done with Sonic as a character, and it's like I like the I like the idea that you know he's a snarky, snarky, fun character, like you know. That kind of a personality can be fun to get around because, you know, you get a lot of funny moments, you get a lot of entertainment value from it. But as of late, especially in Forces, that's literally been his only character trait. And that bothers me because it just feels like nowadays they think Sonic's just all about the sass, the snarkiness and everything. They don't actually dwell into a bit of like what actually makes Sonic such a charismatic guy that makes him such a fun hero to be around, like someone you actually could refer to as a hero. Like, I will always typically go back to the Sonic X episode where they had an entire episode where he said, nah, I don't want to go to the, I don't want to go see the president with us to have us at this party with him. I'm going to take this paraplegic girl, bring her to this island. She's always wanted to, wanted to visit because I'm just that nice of a guy. It's like, I like to see that side of Sonic more often, where he's just generally a nice dude and he's really chill. And I feel like this movie kind of had a bit more of that by exploring another aspect of Sonic within the context mm. of the movie. And that just overall made this character so much more fun to be around. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's not, yeah, it's not the Sonic that we're all used to. But at the same time, though, it's like, oh, well, I mean, it's not so much just that. It's like, it seems like okay. Obviously, this is the this is okay. This is Sonic the Hedgehog. We, we this is the blue blur we all know and love. But at the same time, the way they handle his character in this movie, he seems like a completely different Sonic, like in general, really. So yeah, like in in a in a way, it's like yeah, this was also another breath of fresh air for me. It's like yeah, no, I strongly agree. Like. The, the direction that they took with Sonic's character in this movie, it's like, yeah, it was a breath of fresh air and definitely a very nice change of pace compared to how Sonic is, has been handled, like, in the uh, more recent Sonic games or whatnot. Yeah, it's like, Sonic team, take notes. <laughs> it's like, no, seriously, people have been telling you this time and time again, get some fresh blood. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, well, I mean, it's worked for Sonic Mania. Now let's yeah. get that. Now let let's let's apply let's apply this same thing to the 3D Sonic games, and you know we're bold. We're fucking good. Like we'd have we'd have a Sonic Renaissance going on right now if you just you know just do that with the 3D games and keep that up with us with the Mania style like 2D games. Just just keep keep going down this route, and Sonic will be amazing again. Re yeah, I mean, ser I mean, seriously, come on. We're sl we're approaching Sonic's thirtieth anniversary within like another year and a half from now. It's like, come on, at this point, don't screw this up. <laughs> yeah, make so make Sonic make Sonic great again. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag make Sonic but, great again. But but, yeah, but but actually make him great again. <laughs> yes, yeah, please. Oh uh, yes, really. Uh, but yes, um, that will, I think that will pretty much do it. I mean, that was initially Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie. Oh, man. Yes, mm -hmm. su yes, su yeah, such a great f uh, movie for a video game adaptation. I mean, uh, like we said before, it had many surprises in more ways than one. My God. Oh man, and I again, I'm real. I mean, it's like yes, I know. If I mean, if they are gonna do a sequel, it's like obviously. I, I mean, man, they're gonna have to pull some strings or something. Especially considering that yes, the studio that initially animated Sonic and went through overtime, like freaking product, went through production hell just to make Sonic look great or better. 
so much better. It's like, oh man, yeah, the, the it's like, yeah, they're they're gonna have to do a lot to try to make up for it. But even so, it's like such a such a great movie or whatnot. Again, if you haven't seen it already, go see it. Go see it now while it's still in theaters. If you're still interested, or if you don't have the time to see it in movies, at the very least, it's like, yeah. It's, I think, it, again, I think it's safe to say it's, like, it's worth, like, buying the Blu-ray or DVD for it because it's definitely worth the watch or whatnot, whether it be on the big screen or in a DVD or on DVD. Yeah. And <laughs> tune in next month where we get Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie, the game. Now, now it's, like, giving it, like, uh, two, maybe three years tops. We'll end up getting Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie, three. And, Knuckle, <laughs> so and Knuckles. Wait, we're Sonic Two. <laughs> no, that no, that that's no, that's the sequel where we, it's nothing but Sonic and Tails. Uh, oh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like it's like why else would the first movie you know tease uh, Tails at the very end? It's like obviously they're they're gonna show up. Oh, oh God, <laughs> this this we're gonna be entering the Sonic Cinematic Universe. It's gonna be showing off all the Sonic characters in chronological order that they're gonna be sh that they appeared in the games. Now, you see, what's going to happen is we're going to get a Sega Cinematic Universe, and the next movie's obviously going to be about Knights. Oh, God. That is like, I will not object to that. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, though, if they do end up doing sequels for, like, the Sonic movie, and, like, Eggman comes back in a way where he's like, I've invented a new, ma new machine, the Death Egg, it'll make the Obi-Wan Kenobi comment from the beginning of the movie even more hysterical. <laughs> I, I I introduced to you my latest creation, the Egg Dragoon. No, <laughs> please no. <laughs> we it's time that. for a change of pace. No, that is not a change of pace. We see that once too many times since Sonic Unleashed. Think of something <laughs> different, you quad. <laughs> Christ. Oh, yeah. oh. All right. Anyway. Oh. Anyway. Yeah, I think that. I think that pretty much covers everything. So, yeah. See this movie. Yeah, see this movie. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching or listening to this um, uh, review slash discussion of the Sonic movie, uh, depending on how you're seeing this. We hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, stay tuned for more Spiffy Nielke content in the future, whether it be playthroughs, other projects, and all of that good stuff. All right, so yes, thank you all so much for watching and or listening, and we will see you guys next time. And of course, Danny dies! <laughs> Wait, no!